because then it got serious. So Jacob Veranda comes into the, the zone. I think this was not yesterday, but the day before, right? Veranda chips in the puck. And, you know, he's going against Brendan Carlo. Carlo, you know, tries to get body position, puts the stick up, tries to get the puck, right? Um, Tom Wilson comes in for support, naturally. And in the position, basically, Carlo cannot see Tom Wilson coming. And Wilson boards him, gets him in the head. Carlo went to the hospital. Um, He's apparently okay now. He's been released, but he'll be out a while from Bruce Cassidy, by the way. Wilson ended up getting seven games for this. He had an in-person via Zoom hearing. Now, I have the player safety video up here, and I just want to play um, a few seconds of it. Um, here, is screen sharing up? It is. Should okay, be. Perfect. Um, I'm only going to play a few seconds here, and this is actually very important. Um, okay. and you'll hear why right now. It is important to note that we agree with the Capitals' argument that at this point in the play, Wilson could deliver a hit on Carlo that does not result in supplemental discipline. We acknowledge their assertion that it is common for NHL players to legally deliver hits on unsuspecting or vulnerable opponents. While there are aspects of this hit that may skirt the line between suspendable and not suspendable, it is the totality of the circumstances that cause this play to merit supplemental discipline. What separates this hit from others is the direct and significant contact to a defenseless player's face and head, causing a violent impact with the glass. This is a player with a substantial disciplinary record, taking advantage of an opponent who is in a defenseless position and doing so with significant force. To summarize, this is boarding. Carlo suffered an injury on the play. Wilson has been suspended four times and fined twice during his 543-game NHL career. All right. So, reason that I bring that video up is, if you see the angle that Wilson comes in on, um, Carlo is bent over. So, he can't deliver a clean hit if he goes for the body, but he he goes to the, the sort of hunched over part of Brandon Carlo. And, again... This suspension was not for a hit to the head because the claim was that it was not direct head contact. And we have gone over that plenty of times on this show. Um, And salary wise, he's not a repeat offender. So he actually would have lost and he was double the amount. But as explained in the video, Brandon, sorry, um, Wilson is technically on ice for suspension purposes, still a repeat offender. I think there is some confusion about that. When Pat Friendly tweeted it out, I think a lot of people took it as, oh God, he's safe. But again, they're cap wise. Seven games. um, I'm not going to lie. As somebody who has seen players of the team he cheers for three different times, there's been contact to the head from Pitts that have had no consequences. I am perfectly fine with the suspension of Tom Wilson for this amount of games. And it, but it is a shame that it took the injury for, if, if Carlo doesn't get hurt, I don't know if this is a suspension. Um, Alex, I know that if you've listened to the show and hear about players. I, I have zero faith in and trust in the department of player safety. That should have been double digits. I don't care if it's a 56 game season. It should be double digits if it was, or if it wasn't like, I don't care about the length. Like watch him. First off, I don't care if he's injured or not. That was a dirty hit. It's irrelevant. That's an irrelevant argument. I don't know why, why that's still being used as an argument for a suspension. It doesn't make any sense to me. He went in, pardon. He went into him. And he went left. Watch how he hits. He goes in and his body shifts left. No reason he had to do that. Mm-hmm. So sure. Don't call it a hit to the head. I guess. Like I, I don't know. I don't know anymore. It doesn't feel like the department of player safety. It feels like the department of I'm just watching hockey. I have no trust in George Peros. The guy beat the crap out of people for a living. Get someone who actually knows what they're doing. I'm going to disagree with you here. Actually. Um, I think, cause again, player safety, they're not perfect, obviously. Um, and sir, after this, go ahead, Daniel. Um, 
for the standard, and again, I'm not, I, I'm not, def- I hate defending them, but the standards and precedent we have with boarding, I think the highest one we've ever seen was 18. I think it was from, I can't remember who it was. I had the Friedman tweet, but I deleted it. Um, the standard of what we have for boarding, I think yeah. was fair. And the injury part is unfortunately just how they go. Um, listen, what we've seen for player safety this season, yeah, it's been completely inconsistent, but I, I really think they actually got it right here. But but Adam, you're, you're, you're taking it for face value that you're giving a guy a, a suspension, but he's a repeat offender. They said it. This is his fourth time being suspended. And it's not the first time it's been a hit like this. You know what I mean? But yeah, I think that what they're looking at it is it wasn't like Sunquist. It wasn't the, and that, that was, for those of you who don't know, that was his big suspense. That was the 20 gamer that got reduced to 14. Yeah. Um, but sorry, before we keep going here, Dan, your thoughts on the suspension is it the right length, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, first thing um, I found the uh, free uh, Elliot Freeman tweet. Um, so this is the second highest. The f- highest is eight games for Zach Ronaldo in 2015. Um, Ronaldo. Okay. So yeah. Um, yeah, that guy was a dirty player too. I remember his hit on Zabinik Mohalik in the playoffs. Um, but yeah, it, it it is something that, like, it's again like what we talked about with the Tyler Myers thing. Like, you know, Tom Wilson is clearly using his size in this hit, and I don't like that whole thing where he does go to the left side of things because you know you're digging for the puck. Um. It, it is just something where I, I it's just an it's it's it, it's an expected thing from a player like this and I, I don't like how you know they they, they, they classify it as like a boarding thing where it just so happened to hit the head and in terms of like the seven games like I'm okay with that but I, I kind of agree that you know in terms of what it should have been what he's been able to what he's done in the past like it's just something where we just don't know because it's a shortened season but I, I don't know what George Paris's reasoning is for it when it comes to kind of looking for that balance of things, because like, I don't know why there is a bit of like treading water in a way. And that's why I kind of see it where if you really want to root these types of hits out of the game, it's just like, call it for what it was, not from like an attempt of what it tried to be. It, it is. I think this is, it is, I think there's been a very big issue with the hit to the head rule is, um, that the fault of player safety is that they haven't previously like this regime have not dared to try something with setting the precedent for even just a simple one game suspension for contact to the head. Um, This is the first time it's felt like they actually have, or for me at least that they've, they've gone in there and actually looked and tried to set something here Um, because there have been so many like instances this year where there should have been hits, but they think there wasn't, there was just a fine or something. Right. It's just, a lot of this is the parameters in which the player safety board have, I say board, have to sort of work with it. Like there is a much bigger issue in player safety that yes, again, Peros, they need to be able to take the risk. Even if it comes down to an appeal, you you need to take that first step at the same time though, the NHL itself seriously, seriously need to get a sort of fixture on this hit to the head rule. Because in reality, it should have been the suspension for the hit to the head. And under those guidelines, I think he's getting a lot more games. It's just the whole framework we're working in here for player safety is just broken in and of itself. You know what I mean? Yeah, I I, I get what you mean. The, another thing here is let's remember there being there. There's a lawsuit going on. This, yeah. this, it's, we're going to be, they're going to be dumping millions of dollars. And if they don't want to fix it, there's going to be the next generation of players and the next generation of players. And this is going to go past us. This is going to go past Gary Bettman. And it's just going to keep going and going and going until someone wants to deal with the reality mm-hmm. that you are wasting millions of dollars fighting this lawsuit. You can stop it right now and say that we are putting a rule in place. We are setting a rule in place, and then what? Then what? What's the player going to say when they when they have concussions, and then they don't get? There's nothing. There's no penalty to anybody. If there's a penalty, there we go. 
we're trying to root it out of the game. You want to talk inconsistencies, by the way. Armia on that Myers hit got a concussion. What did our uh, what did Myers get for that? Nothing. Um, you guys don't want to add anything more to this before we move on. No, nothing for me. It just hurts that Tom Wilson's from Toronto. Uh, sure. Um, 